Welcome YouTube. I've got a video series here coming up. It's a Husqvarna 394 rebuild. Also converting it to a 395 to do some port work and a muffler mod to it. This is for my buddy Dave and it's going to be a surprise for his father. So uh, thanks for watching. Next up, I'm going to start splitting the case and doing the bottom end. All right, so to disassemble the crankcase, before you split it, you're gonna have uh, six bolts. There's one back in here, there's one here, one there, there, here, and the last one is here. Don't wanna forget about that one. There's a spring in the way. All right, so the way I split this is I just use a socket, a bolt, and nut and washer on both sides. And I use that just to split them. I don't use fancy tools. You just gotta double check and make sure you get all the bolts out because you can do some damage to the cases if you don't. So just look around quick, make sure there's nothing hiding. So I just got the uh, cases split, no problems. I used uh, three of my little spreaders there. I had the, uh, the bearing is on the crank, which that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to remove the crankshaft by using a center punch like that and beating it out. All right, so no problems there. Going to have to remove that old bearing. That's not a problem. We'll get that out too. Must be in there pretty good. Back on the 394 project, uh, I got the cases here prepped up. I've got my my uh, brand new 394 Husqvarna crankshaft and crank bearings. They've got kind of some crud in them just because they're so old, um, just like dirt and stuff. So I'm gonna clean them up. I've got my crank halves cleaned up. I'm probably gonna wipe out. There's some junk in the uh, the oil reservoir and what I'm gonna do is after I get that tightened up I'm going to install the um, the bearings in the cases first all right then um, just some other things you want to kind of check before you reinstall these make sure your pickup tubes in here this is like a little breather or vent um, and make sure you install your crank half gasket and the gasket for 394 is part number 503 4717 01 that was seven bucks while i think of it the part number for the crankshaft kit is 501 8149-01 comes with the crankshaft comes with the wrist pin bearing comes with the two crankshaft bearings and uh, the key. All right, so I'm about to install the bearings. There is no left or right. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you install them. What does matter is the way you install the crankshaft. And I'm not using a press or anything like that to put them in. I've got a block of wood here to support it. And I would normally use a socket because this thing doesn't always work. This is a bearing race installer, bearing race and seal installer. And it just so happens that this nut or bolt, the head of that, will fit inside the hole here. So when you're pounding that against this race, it's actually pounding on the outside and the inside. You really just need to pound the outside edge of that where you're not hurting um, the bearings. So, and that's why I want to install these on first because then I'll, uh, I'll push against this inner race here and I'm not doing any damage to these bearings. Uh, getting them started in the holes was a little tough. Uh, I, with this thing here, it, uh, it got this one cocked, but I had to, I pounded it back out and I used a brass punch. And actually, really, I just t took a, my small hammer there and I hit the edges around till I got it started. And then I took that and I really uh, put the hammer down on it. And I just got them down 
uh, flush or just below flush at the moment here. When I, once I get the cases installed and everything bolted down and um, <clears throat> the crankshaft on, then um, you know it's everything will squeeze itself together, and then you kind of wrap both sides of the crank in the races to get them uh, freed up and unbound. Here is I got the crankshaft just on the bearing. Now you got to make sure that you have the clutch side on the clutch side and the flywheel side, that taper end, make sure they're on the right halves. You also got to make sure that your rod is in this uh, in the bore and you don't get it cockeyed over on the edges there because that um, you'll have to either take it out or you might do some damage. And I got this sitting on a piece of wood here so I don't do any damage on the crankshaft and I'm gonna pound, I've kinda got a teeter in here, I'm gonna get a socket and pound the inner race onto the crankshaft so I don't do any damage to um, the bearing or the crank. See me here? I've got my rig up here, and all you got to do is take a small hammer and just tap on it, and I can feel it going down already. I've got like a 11 sixteenths socket on it. I can only go so far before I start beating the threads down on that. I almost got it in all the way. Well, I got I got a ways to go. I got about a half inch. I'm going to grab a longer socket here. You got a three quarter, that won't fit. 11 sixteenths again. That's even got a little space in it. This is a 5 8. Ouch. I don't know what I broke there, but just make sure you're not going to ruin the threads. That one's actually a really nice fit. It's like it was made for that. We got some dirt in there though now, but oh well. We'll clean it out. Just keep tapping away. Make sure you don't. Make sure everything's still good and you're not beating on threads. Oh, you can hear the metal. I'm hitting something. Got about a quarter inch to go on that. Let me change sockets here. Move up a size. It's a little loose around that race. Okay, so that's it for that side. All right. So uh, got it turned around here. I'm installing my bolts so it aligns the gasket and everything and I'm so close now that I definitely have enough room to uh, get some threads started. And that way uh, you won't screw up any of the bolt holes. You got six bolts. They're all about that length except one of them. And I'll show you here, it's uh, it's behind one of the anti-vibration springs. That's the short one right there. So that's where this one goes. See? That's that one. So I got my bolt started here. Uh, it's going to help align the gasket, make it a lot easier. And then I've got my crankshaft supported on this block of wood so nothing damages threads or anything like that. Uh, you want to be pushing against the crank, the inner race of the bearing onto the crankshaft, not the crank halves. All right. Just double check those alignment pins that they're not going to tear that gasket. And your connecting rod. There we go. Looks like everything's going good. Got my pins all in. That's it. Can you hear the difference in the tone? All right. So now I can take uh, <clears throat> my four millimeter here and tighten everything up. Tightening, you got the four around the crank. So uh, I tighten those up in a star pattern so they're nice and snug. And then I go ahead, tighten my short bolt here, and uh, the one back down in here. Okay, so before you you uh, 
you go to install your crankshaft seals while you can get at the bearings. <laughs> um, and you have all your bolts tightened up for the crankcase uh, half. You gotta make sure that this guy, this crankshaft, is loose. See, it takes a little bit of force to go down. That's too tight. So what I'll do here is I'll take the, uh, the socket I was using, I'll get it over that race. I'm going to go this way first because um, this appears to be a little too short, but give it a couple wraps. That loosened up a little bit. I'll go the other way. Pretty much just got to seat the races on the crankshaft. I have to get it better. Oh, I, can, I can do that this way. There's a little, a look at that. That just loosened it right up. I might even go a couple more times just to double, double check it. Yeah, that's in the way looser. It should take like no effort to move that crankshaft. It's spinning it around no problem. Before you do your crank seals, uh, good time to pre-lube your bearings. Get a little oil can, fill it up with a two-stroke mix. Make sure it's, the oil can's nice and clean first. Um, and so what you want to do is put some oil in on this side there. And also put it on the rod bearing. You don't really need to do that one right now. But also you can try to uh, turn it in a way where you can get at the bearings on the inside. A little anal, but um, it's just good. You might as well get some oil in there. Don't hurt. Seals here that I'm using, they're Stens. Uh, this is the number here, 495-412, uh, and that's a Husqvarna number, 503-260-205. And what you're going to do is uh, get some oil, pre-lube here, there, and uh, I'm going to pre-lube the inside of the... Got my crank seal on. Then I took my... Um, socket pushed on the seal and turned the crankshaft alright and got the seal started I pounded in a couple hits and before the seal pops out I got this pick in here and what I'm doing is it's pushed against the crankshaft and I'm spinning the crankshaft and it's almost like a tire machine where I'm actually getting, I got half of it on there. And you can see it's trying to push out there. And I'm just slowly turning it around. Be careful not to get that pick in that seal or else you'll destroy it. Okay, so when you get your seal down, I take a brass hammer or a punch and I push it down all the way around here so it's flush with the top of this case but more importantly you need to make sure that that lip of the seal I'll try to use a pick here see this like edge here that seal needs to ride on this part of the crankshaft and there's just you know a thousandth of an inch or something there really close but it needs to ride on this part of the crankshaft. So that's as deep as it needs to go. So that's the end of the video here. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe for the channel here. Looking to make some more chainsaw videos. Uh, next video is going to be converting it to from a 394 to a 395. And then after that, I'm going to do some port work and a muffler mod. Thanks again.